attitude to live in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. You grit your teeth about the, the other 10000 you paid last year in taxes, or you rip the letter to shreds while demanding more. Question number three, you receive a letter from the IRS stating that you will be audited. How do you respond? Gratitude to live in America, the land of the free and home of the brave. You clench the phone and call your accountant. Or you write on Facebook an angry post about the tax opposition or oppression in the USA. Question number four, you're driving um, your, your son or daughter to school and as you drop them off um, at, at the school, the car in front of you decides they just want to park there, trapping you in the school parking lot. How do you respond? You look out the window and give thanks for this time to stop and smell the roses and car fumes. B, you grab the steering wheel tighter and ste as steam comes out of your ears. Or do you honk your horn continuously until the sound, until you sound out, move your car in Morse code? Question number five. You're watching your favorite team play on Sunday and they win by a touchdown in a close game. How do you respond? A, stand up and start saying, how about them cowboys? <laughs> if we do that today, it will be a miracle. Um, <laughs> Tiffany's right. I do holler at the TV because they would throw me in jail if I was hollering at the game. <laughs> so um, anyway, no, that's not true. Uh, maybe true. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry, that's A, you'd stand up, how about them cowboys? Or B, you wring your hands over the game next week. Or you call the sports radio station and complain how we should have won by three touchdowns. So, so here, let's grade. If, if you had all Bs for your answers, you need to take a breath, chill out, and relax. <laughs> um, if you had all Cs for your answers, you may need therapy. <laughs> If you had all A's, then I'm going to invite you to come preach this message this morning. Um, but if you've had a mixture of, a, of A, B's, and C's, then I would just say this, welcome to the club, right? Um, are, are you not surprised when people are, are grateful? Does it surprise you when people are grateful about things that sometimes we struggle to be grateful about? Um, you know, we always... Uh, there's probably, we've always been a, uh, you know, we kind of gritted our teeth through it, and some of us have been a grouch through it, and some of us have, have um, been uh, gracious and, and given gratitude through it, but I don't know that any of us, um, maybe in all A's, well, maybe Tiffany, but um, <laughs> what I've observed is that people, um, they handle life so differently um, and yet, I believe as followers of Christ, the way we should respond to life is with a generous, with generous gratitude unto the Lord. It may not be all that I want it to be, but thank God it's not what maybe I even deserve. Right? And so, we, we look at this passage, and here's these ten men Nine of them we anticipate, just because of Scripture, that they were Jewish. One was a Samaritan. In fact, if you read that, uh, it, it's, it's kind of odd the way sometimes Scripture identifies things, but when they identify this, and they, they specifically identify the foreigner, it's almost, it's, if, if you read it, it's almost a racist thing. It would be, almost, it would be like us saying that and, and using a, 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 a particular term about someone else, right? Because it says, and he was a Samaritan. Now, one of the things you've got to understand, so uh, a few observations in this one, and I've already stated, the tr it says that they were on this journey, and this journey would have taken several days just to drive from Galilee to Jerusalem is about a two and a half hour, three hour drive. So can you imagine they walked this? And so they come into this, into this village, into this area, um, and there's these 10 men, it says that they stood afar off and that they lifted their voice. But the law required that they stood off because for, for leprosy was very contagious. There was, there was no mask that they could wear. <laughs> but that made me think of a little bit of that, right? In, in this situation, we wear masks so that we can uh, 
protect others. And there's wisdom in that and all that stuff. But the point is, is it, they said that they stood afar off and they lifted their voices. Master, have mercy on us. Um, um, they were outcasts. They weren't allowed to be in the general population. But Jesus' response to him, he says, go show yourself to the priest. And the reason they had to go to the priest, the priest was the physician of the day. They're the ones that said, yes, yes, you're clean. No, you're not. They're the ones that, that would give the determining factor whether these men could go back into, into the general population or if there were still things that they had to wait on. And if you go to, to Leviticus chapter 14, you can go in there and you can begin to read the law and what Moses gave to the Israelites as to how they should handle um, leprosy and some of those different things and all the cleansing and all the things that they had to go through. But Leviticus 14, do that at another time, not right now, because um, you'll read it and uh, you'll, you'll miss all of this good stuff. So that's later on, Leviticus 14. So there's a few observations. Um, when we talk of generosity, it's a readiness or a liberality in giving. And I, like I said, I don't believe it's just in giving of finances. I believe it's in giving of our time, of our talent, of our, of our lives. Um, another definition is a generous act. Um, a, a part of that definition or, or something to identify that generosity is the spirit and action of freely and frequently giving to others. And so I want us to, I want us to walk through this passage and because I believe there's some things that we need to learn about being generous with our gratitude. First, it's their request. It says that they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It, isn't it, uh, isn't it um, strange what we'll do to get the Lord's attention? Lord, I'll even go to church today. I'll even pray. I'll even read my, I'll even be nice to my spouse we, we do those things, right? Um, and why? Because we're, we're trying to attract his attention. It says that right here in this moment that they're standing, and you would think that they were at a worship service or something. Jesus! They were loud. They wanted to get recognized. They probably had their hands raised, right? In this moment, have mercy on us. Um, how often do we go all out to ask, but our response doesn't really match our request? Right, we, we do all these great things and, and the Lord blesses us or whatever and then we never come back to say thank. It, it's kind of like this. Have you ever had this? If you've got kids, can we have a puppy, please? I'll feed it. I'll clean my room for the rest of my life. And all these things, right? They're gonna give you all these great things that we're gonna do. Tiffany came to me one time. She goes, can I have a cat? I'll feed it. And I'm like, no, you won't. There will be no cat in this house. So I was at Staples one day, and I found this pen. It was a little cat, so I bought it. said, here, eat your cat. <laughs> anyway, uh, but you, right, the, the request, all the things that we'll say that we'll do in order to, oh, God, I promise I'll never do that again. And yet, 10 minutes down the road, it's like, oops, I did it again. Uh, anyway. But here's the awesome thing, Jesus' response And what it does, it shows the generosity of Jesus. It says, so when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. Now, we don't know how far, we don't know how far the priest was from them, right? Scripture doesn't give us some of those details. We anticipate they're in a village. We don't know if they're having to go to Jerusalem to do this. We don't know if they're just having to go down to the local um, street on the uh, church on the corner. We don't know exactly what's going on in this situation, but it says as they went. So we don't know if they walked one mile and something happened. We don't know if they took 10 steps and something happened. We don't know, but we do know this because scripture says as they went, they were cleansed. Now, one of the things that I want you to, uh, and, and I believe this, and just looking at this passage and some other things, it says when they were cleansed, it is what happened was is they had leprosy, and let's say they were missing a finger because leprosy, um, when it was cleansed, it means that it was no longer spreading. It didn't mean that, that their finger grew back. It just meant that the leprosy, they had been cleansed from leprosy. But here's one of the things that happened. It, their obedience to follow his command took faith. You get that? They had faith. One, they had faith to say, hey, Jesus, heal us. They had faith in Jesus to, to heal 
But then they had faith to follow his command. Because listen, when, how many times have we said, Lord, if you'll do this, then I'll take a step. And it says that they took a step and then the Lord healed them. Then the Lord, then the healing came. It was, and like I said, it may have been a mile down the road. How long do we have to walk until this happens? Have, has it seemed like a marathon that you've walked until this happened? Maybe you kept walking and you're still walking today and you're like, when? But it was their faith. Their obedience to follow. See, they had faith to ask Jesus for help, and then they had faith to follow. But then there's a, a response that takes place that separates two different classes here, two different people. Not just, um, not just from a, an ethnic change, but there were nine that kept walking, but one of them responded. Listen, can you imagine this? Because Scripture doesn't show us this, and maybe when we get to eternity, we can ask, you know, Lord, what, what, what happened here, and how did this all play out? And probably when we get there, it won't make a difference. But anyway, it, it, good to think about now. They're walk, let's just say they walked a mile down the road, and he realizes, hey, I'm cleansed. That meant he had to turn around and walk another mile to come back to find Jesus. Some of us find it hard. Well, we'll leave that alone. But it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face and at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Um, it says the loud voice. I, and I believe at the, with the same level of intensity that he asked to be healed was the same level of intensity that he came back and to give thanks. I don't believe that he was like, well, I'm loud now and I'm quiet now. I believe that he was, when he recognized what the Lord had done for him, that he came back and with a loud voice, it says that he fell, at his, he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. But he came back to give thanks, and his thanks or his worship or his gratitude would be, be recognized as his faith. But listen, what else did he have to give? Think about it. He's an outcast. He has no means of income. He's on his own. He's a survivor at this point, right? He's just hoping that they don't vote him off the island because he's a Samaritan. Do you get that for a moment? They, the Jews, hated the Samaritans, and yet for some reason, this man is just hanging out with them. Maybe, maybe he didn't let them know he was a Samaritan, or maybe he was just kind of, he stood back. I don't know what it is, but in this moment, here he comes, and he doesn't have anything to offer, but what does he do? He comes and gives all that he had. Do you get that? He came and just, Lord, I... I can't imagine. It, you know, we, we, we've sang that song. You've probably heard the song many years ago that came out. I can only imagine. When I get to heaven, have you ever thought about that? What is going to happen? Um, maybe I'll stand in worship. Maybe I'll shout. Maybe I'll fall. I don't know what it's going to be like, and I don't know it. It'll probably be all of those all in a, a matter of moments. But he gave all that he had because he had no means. He was an outcast. And his level of worship may not have matched the level of blessing but he gave his all. What else did he have to give? I'm going to ask you, what else do you have to give? And so Jesus did not, I, I'd also, I want you to understand something this morning. I believe this is true. Jesus didn't take the healing from those who were ungrateful, but he didn't receive all. They didn't receive all that the Samaritan man would receive. Because of his thankfulness, his gratefulness to the Lord. See, because of the reward of his gratitude, it says, and he said to him, Jesus said to him, arise, go your way, your faith, your faith. What faith did he have? His faith was that he came back and offered thanks. His faith was that he came back and said, Lord, thank you. I am grateful. I worship you. I honor you. How awesome is this? I'm cleansed. I can go see my, I can go see my grandson that I haven't seen. I can go and see my granddaughter. That I can go, right? I, I, I get to go back and see my wife. I get to go back and see all these things. There's no telling all that was communicated in that moment, but in that moment, it says, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. It was counted his faith. See, Jesus rewarded his faith. In fact, we know from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says that he is a rewarder. It, without faith, you cannot please God, but he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and is, and is diligently coming to worship him was recognized as faith, and God rewarded his faith. Jesus rewarded his faith. 
It says made you well, and some would anticipate it was only spiritual that he was he was just saved. But I believe that he not only I don't believe I believe that not only was he saved spiritually, but I also believe that he was restored physically. And and listen, uh, let me just go to scripture and in Luke chapter eight, verse forty three through forty eight, the woman with the issue of blood, when she touches the hem of his garment, Jesus' response to her was, "Your faith has made you well." Was it just salvation? No, we know that the issue of blood was stopped. We see in Luke chapter 18 where blind Bartimaeus is crying out to the Lord. And, and he says, you can heal me. And Jesus' response to blind Bartimaeus is, your faith has made you well. Then we see also in Luke chapter 5 the paralyzed man that his four friends drop him through the roof. And it says this. It says, and Jesus saw their faith. Didn't see the man's faith, saw their faith. And he says to him, your sins are forgiven you. And then the scribes, those people that, those religious people start getting mad. Oh, that's blasphemy. How can he say that? And Jesus is like, what's easier to say? Rise up and walk or your sins are forgiven. But to show you, this is the SRV, right? So you can go there. I told you where it is. But the SRV, I'm paraphrasing. He, he, he says, to show you that God has power that I have the power of God in my life, rise up and walk. I believe that this man, when he came back and he, he reciprocated, he gave back to Jesus what was rightfully Jesus, and that was a, a place of gratitude, a place of uh, exaltation, a place of worship, a place of thanks. I believe that in that moment, not when he says, you've been made well, because he doesn't say to him, then continue to go to the priest. He says, you've been made well. I believe that all the things that the leprosy had taken had been restored. He didn't have to have the priest say, oh yeah, you look cleansed. He could look at his own hand and say, it's all there. And I just believe that. I, but just from, and, and I've shared some, some scripture with you about Jesus' generosity to heal generated a response of thanks and worship. He worshiped and gave thanks with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. And so let's be grateful. I'm, who knows in the midst of it. May be your miracle. In the middle of your thanks. In the middle of your praise. In the middle of it. May be. The result that you've been looking for. Well I just. Listen, I'm just telling you, we need, to be, we need to learn to be generous unto the Lord in our worship. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, Paul writing to the church, he says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, for us. Give thanks. It didn't say give thanks for everything. It said give thanks in everything. So in the middle of the crisis, give thanks. In the middle of the difficulty, give thanks. In the middle of, 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 of the 10-item checkout, and the person in front of you got 15, give thanks. Right? In the parking lot, give thanks. The IRS, give thanks. <laughs> Come on. Right? In, in it, not because of it, but in it. Why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy. I want to be generous to him because he's been more than generous to me. I want to be generous to him with all, that I, with all of my life and all that I am because he's been more than generous to me. I didn't do anything to re really to receive um, other than to say, would you ask? But I didn't do anything to deserve his grace and his mercy that he's extended toward me. His faithfulness and his goodness. But in everything, given that Give thanks. See, God's generosity compels a response. I shared this with you last week, but I believe it says in 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. And so there's a, there's a place of reciprocation right there because he loved me. Well, I, I'm, I'm compelled to love him. Well, listen, I'm compelled to be generous to, toward him in my worship because he was generous toward me. And so 
there, there's a place that his generosity compels something out of me. That's that when we come in and, and we stand and sing or we stand, however it is, listen, there ought to be, oh, wow, I'm just so tired. I'm this, all, that, all these things are bad. Listen, you're not giving thanks in it. You're trying to give thanks through it. And you can't. You got to give it thanks to him in the midst of it. And so, we reciprocate to God because he is so generous toward us. I would say this. If we struggle to be thankful, you probably struggle to be generous. If you struggle to be thankful, you probably struggle with being generous. And this morning as I was looking at this, this passage came to my mind. And, and this, there's, there's a phrase in here that weighs Heavily in the midst of this, Luke 6, 37 and 38, he says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgiven, you'll be forgiven. Given, it will be given to you. Good and measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. And get this, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Oh, Lord, forgive me for my lack of generosity toward you and toward others. Lord, help me to be generous because you've been so generous to me. I, I, want, I want it measured out. I want to be gracious and I want to be forgiving and I, 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 want to, you know, I don't want to be condemning. I, I want to be a giver. Why? Because with that same measure that I use, it's going to come back. That whole idea of, of sowing and reaping, if you give sparingly, you receive sparingly, but if you give generously, you receive generously. And so let us, let us be generous in our worship, not because, well, because I'm going to get more, but because he's more worthy. Worthy of it. I want to be generous in my gratefulness. And so I would say this morning, as we talk about generosity, we need to be, genero be generous to God with our gratitude and thanks. But I think we need to be generous with each other with gratitude and thanks. We ought to be generous to each other. We ought to be generous to those people that have 15 items in the 10-item line, and we ought to be generous to them and forgiving and not knowing the things that they're walking through in the midst of that. They got in that line because it was, they had, there was no line, and they needed to get out to go home because they got a son or a daughter that's sick. We don't know all the stories, do we? But a lot of times we can be very condemning. We can be very judgmental. Oh, they shouldn't be here. Uh, but if you knew the whole story, you'd just say, hey, can I buy your groceries too? But most of the time, we're not generous like that because we're like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. But aren't you glad that Jesus didn't do that toward us? Romans 5, 8, man, it ought to be a pillar in our lives. God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died. He was generous to me when I rejected him. He was generous toward me when I, when I would turn my back on him. I, he was generous toward me when I would be arrogant toward him. I, he was generous, right? He was How generous should I be in return? Oh, what a gift. Oh, what a price that he paid. And we're talking about generosity. But we're talking about being generous with gratitude. In this season, obviously, and this Thanksgiving season, we're always, we're always thankful, right? We, we should be. We should always be thankful in all things. But the, the thing is, is in this season, it gets highlighted by a lot of different things. But I, I would encourage us, let's look for opportunities to be gen generous with gratitude, with thanks, and with praise. Because here's the thing. You don't know the doors of opportunity and the doors of blessing that you may be opening. You don't know the doors that you may open that you thought, I'm going to change it to be generous. Why? Because he was generous toward me. It says this of Jesus in Hebrews. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You know, the joy, the joy wasn't eternity. The joy was you and me. We were his joy that we would be reconciled to the Father. That was the joy that he would go. He didn't grit it out. But he was gracious toward the Father and gracious to us. And because of that, you and I ought to be generous. Not just financially, but in every area of our lives. 
with everything that we do. We ought to be generous driving down the street. We ought to be generous in the line. And we ought to be generous wherever we go. Why? Because of the work that he did in us. The work that he's doing in us. And the work that he will do in us. Lord, help us to have an attitude of generosity with gratitude towards you and toward others. Before I close, I believe that at the end of worship, I, I believe Riker and the things that she ministered and communicated were, were accurate, but I believe that in that there's, there's, a, there's a place of emotional healing. And sometimes it's our response that opens the door to that healing. It was this man's response that opened the door to his he, full and complete healing. And so maybe, there, there, maybe there's some mental anguish or maybe there's just some mental things um, emotional things. And, and I believe that the Lord is able to heal. I believe the Lord desires to heal. I believe that in our, in our um, society, in our country right now, one of the greatest things that happens, and we, we hear it all the time right now, talking about mental issues and mental health. And listen, whenever you have an expectation and the expectation doesn't go the way you want it, then you become have mental anguish. And I just want to tell you something. There is a peace that passes all understanding that can overcome the anguish of life and the anguish of disappointment and the anguish of loss and the anguish of, of, of just of life. But I want to say to you this morning, if that's you, if if you are in need of that, I believe that the Lord is here to minister to you. I don't have to lay hands on you. In fact, Jesus didn't even lay hands on these 10 men. It says that they were walking away from him and the Lord was able to heal him. I'm telling you, I don't have to lay hands on you. I'm just telling you, if you'll receive what he has for you. He, um, the, the 10th man, the Samaritan man, he gave us a great, he gave us a great um, illustration as to how to respond. In a place of gratitude, in a place of thanks, in a place of praise. And so, Lord, I pray for those today that are anxious. Lord, they're, they're um, disappointed. They're frustrated. And, Lord, they may even be mad at you, but, Lord, I know this, that you are big enough and that you are great enough and that you are able. Lord, I speak healing. I release healing. In the name of Jesus, heal our minds, heal our spirits, heal our emotions, Lord, heal our bodies. Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you today because you are faithful. And I thank you today because you are able. And Lord, I thank you today because you are gracious and merciful toward us. And so, Lord, I just give you thanks. I give you praise. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise today, would you? Hallelujah! Lord, you are worthy. You are 